there was a sort of build up over the years of um, always looking for an alternative to what I was doing, always looking for an easier way out, being a bit lazy probably. I was looking for something, some system to uh, suit my uh, farming system, uh, which was based really on dog and stick farming of the 1930s, which I was brought up with. Uh, where there's the the ones that survived were the ones that uh, produced for the cheapest. And I found that wool, growing wool, was um, the main bugbear. Not just the shearing, but the crutching and dagging and ewes going on cast and getting entangled in bramble and all the other, other things. So I experimented a bit with other breeds and uh, eventually I came up across this uh, really it's uh, about two thirds in very simple terms, about two thirds Wiltshire Horn and about one third of the um, Nelson type of Welsh Mountain. And um, then selected from those since the early 1960s. After getting out of wool, you find out that uh, how much work there is involved. It's been claimed there's 80% of the cost of, um, of shepherding is connected with wool, and I wouldn't argue with that. People would say, oh, well, don't you get a lot of wool scattered around the, the fields when they're shedding? Or, We've seen for ourselves now there's no wool to be seen at all because there's no wool there in the first place. The whole essence is that you're aiming at the very lowest possible cost of production. The absence of interfering, trying to distance yourself from what you've been brought up to do to give them 24-7 attention. Just keep an eye on them from a distance and the further the distance the better. Some people put them in sheds because they've got sheds. This is completely stupid. We don't buy any in bought feed or even homegrown feed apart from grass and silage or hay. Try it out and um, try and leave it to nature as much as possible. It's very easy to, to say that, but it's very difficult to do because we've been brought up to being hands on all the time especially at lambing time and um, really if you can try one mob of sheep if you've some outly outlying land or something like that just go around them once a day at lambing you'd be surprised how few you've lose, lost compared to the, the ones that you're with all the time all in all it was um, a brilliant um, move forwards quite frankly if I may say so myself <laughs> And uh, I'm very happy with the, with the with the progress, and I should have done it 20 years earlier, but um, I did it. <laughs> I can't see why anybody would want to go into keeping woolly sheep. Quite frankly, I, there's just no argument for it in my book.